my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay the second part of APA show is right around the corner and here's what you should know from the general story situation to the possible direction the second half might be headed. Of course, spoiler alert. Devil May Cry Honkai Edition, or as people call it, APH Show, was advertised as a new storyline set many years after the Honkai ended. It's been a while since the last time APH Show was updated, so this video will act as a review of the first part and also as a way for anyone to keep themselves updated. Josh, APA show is set 8 years after the Great Eruption banished Honkai from Earth. Shikso, now under Teresa, became an international aid organization helping to rebuild the damage done from the previous eruption event. The story takes us to a fictional city of Saint Fountain, where we play as characters that are a mix of new and returning faces. We play as the special Shikso squad going into the city to search for Wild Yang who went missing shortly after arriving there. And that is about most of what we know. APA show likes to leave information about its current world setting intentionally vague. For example, where is Otto? Why is that guy who sounds like him here? He shouldn't be here. We saw him left. Actually, that last one might be relevant to the latest chapter, but the point is that we rarely ever get concrete answers to these kind of questions. So what did we actually know to a certain extent? Perhaps the most hotly debated topic is of course about Kiana's whereabouts, which a good amount of people seems to believe that she's on the moon, using herself as the seal to keep the Honkai on the moon. In my research, I was not able to confirm or deny this claim. The notion probably came about due to the meaning behind her name being the moon goddess and all, but that's the only evidence that I could think of that supports this. It's just something that is thrown around a lot, often without solid evidence to back it up. We can get a better idea by looking at the instances where Kiana was referenced which is almost always about reinforcing how much she is missed by May. Have a listen to these few lines. あの子もそうだったよね。彼女。なんと if you know any other relevant lines that I didn't put here, feel free to let me know down below. Anyway, right here, we can see that May most likely have not had any contact with Kiana throughout all these years for whatever reasons. But clearly, we can see that May still keeps the memories she had many years ago close to her heart. Still, what do any of this tell us about Kiana's whereabouts? Like with anything a PS show tells us, it's so vague that it can either be that she's somewhere in a place far, far away, <coughs> is missing, or just have already kicked the bucket. Now, what about this? This auto sounding person we caught went off near the beginning of the experience. He's a sentient AI from the first Divine Key, the one that Otto was in possession of. It's just that he stole one of his clones and used it as his avatar after Otto, quote, left. The Void Archives plays a major part in what happened to Saint Fountain before the arrival of the squad from Shikso. It has been said that Saint Fountain looks perfectly normal from the outside, but in reality, the place has been completely infiltrated by these robot thingies, which are called the Sky People, which to summarize, is a spacefaring colony. Race. There are a few hints scattered in many places telling us how exactly this went down which I will attempt to put together to make it easier to understand. In a diary from a resident of Saint Fountain, it details mysterious disappearances that keeps happening around where the writer stays. Strange things running through the streets at night, seemingly dwindling amount of people around the neighborhood, along with some people starting to act differently. This coincides with the audio files depicting Void Archives collaborating with the Sky People to take over Saint Fountain. We can infer how exactly they achieved this by looking further into the alien space manga where we know that the Sky People use something called the Nerve Worms to to infiltrate and take control of a part of the indigenous population. This was probably what caused the anomalies detailed in the diary. And it doesn't end there. In the squad's mission briefing, Wild Yang was invited to a business trip in Saint Fountain. But as we will soon learn, this was a ruse to lure him into the city to more easily capture him. This has led me to believe that the invitation was most likely given out by the assimilated governing body of Saint Fountain. 
Okay, so now the question then becomes what the Sky People is trying to achieve. Looking at alien space again, we would know that the Sky People are after the Honkai on the moon. When they find a target, they would first send in the scouts with the Vanguard stones disguised as asteroids, which also doubles as a weapon to crash into the planet, dealing massive damage. After the first strike, they would send in their ground forces to take over said planet and its Honkai reserves. They tried this and failed in 2005, a few years after the second eruption, but before the main storyline starts. Now many years later in a PHO, it's their second attempt. The arcane castle we see in the sky above Saint Fountain was probably the Vanguard Stone. An audio file mentioned the construction of the road and the gate, preparing for some kind of arrival, which gives it some Independence Day vibes which can also be seen on the concept arts for a PHO. This has led me to believe that Saint Fountain was chosen to be their forward operating base, where they could start calling in the block of their forces from. This is what I think the second part will be about cleaning up and stopping more sky people forces from being called in. We don't know whether the road or the gate was completed, but in a scene from the trailer, we can see a big spaceship of some kind in the sky. I couldn't tell if this was the same type shown in alien space, but anyway, it would suggest that they might have completed them to a certain degree. We would probably be seeing the squad working to take out whatever is being used to call in these things. That would explain much of the environment shown in the trailer, being a combination of crimson red along with black, which are colors associated with anything sky people. The name that was chosen for this new chapter is Star Above Drowned Lands, which I want to emphasize the word star, also found in the name of the prologue available on Global right now. This word could be referring to the possibility of a Vanguard Stone, I just hit the table. This word could be referring to the possibility of a Vanguard Stone or meteors of some kind crashing down to Earth, or it could just be the arrival of the Sky People Invasion Force. A peer show was Mihoyo's take on telling the story in a different way, probably intended as some field training before Genshin Impact considering they both employ very similar tactics. I particularly like the archives for the enemies we fight, it showcases the cast personalities through an interesting group chat they have going on, which is something I would love to see in the second part. This archives also reference the parasitic tendencies of the nerve worms, which is called the lovers here. Now, it has since been brought to light that a PHO can be taken as prologue for the upcoming Star Rail. If you don't believe me, here's what looks like the Star Rail Himiko in the Alien Space Manga. I am really looking forward to see what the second part of a PHO has to offer, but now that I have been babbering for way too long, I would like to thank you all for watching to the end. So how was your experience playing a PHO? What are some of the expectations you have for the next part? Let me know down below. That's about it for today. And I'll see you next time. Cutie me the cute. Oh? Interesting. Hey, what? No way. Mm, look at her shoulder guard. What is that icon? A lot of the stuff on her body looks like feathers, like her cape.